Good morning. Good morning. Woo, how we doing today? Listen, man, you see the title. You see the title. How many times have you said that? You said you love me. And this morning I was I was laughing so hard. Um because normally when God start dealing with me, man, he's, he hits a place in me that um, makes me get into a, a place of just being thankful. But today it was just kind of, it, it was like, wow, God. And and I'm not talking about you saying it to someone else because he told me, as he was telling me, it all starts with him. And it's him saying this to me. You said you love me, Gerald. You said you love me because if, if I was, if anybody was to ask you, if you love God, you're going to say, yes, I love God. Yes, I love God. And so it was like, I need you to understand that everything revolves around me. Everything starts with me from the beginning to the end. It starts with me. It doesn't start with someone else. It doesn't start with your spouse. It doesn't start with your family member. It doesn't start with someone. It starts with me. I'm that meter. I'm the thing. I, I'm. I am the one that that you look at to see if if what you're doing um, with me can manifest and operate in what you're in what you're trying to do. I was like, wow. Okay, God, I got you. And then he hit me again when he says, "You said." I mean, like, you said. You know, like when you get when you get kind of you, know, you said you you said you love me. Hmm. I don't know how many times I tell God, told God that when I was in my place, I'm like, man, you said you love me. This don't look like love. Where's the love in this? And I'm sitting there like waiting on, him, on a response. And he, I mean, it was like, you the one said, Jerry, you said you love me. And I'm telling God, you said you love me. So we're going back and forth with this, this, you said you love me. So he hit me with, and I now I, I get why God had me on this on, on on this love series and why it's important to understand the um his love, not not man's love, not your feelings and your emotions. But we're talking about things that go past that, that goes against your flesh, that goes against your emotions, that goes against everything that your human body is trying to go against. It, it, it's that place. And so he, he said something to me this morning. He said. You tapped on something the other day when I when I brought you into the love series and you was talking about um, um, uh, what is love. And and I had to he said, today is the day I want you to check your love. I want I want you to I want you to evaluate. Are you loving me like I love you? Ooh, I started. I was like, oh, OK, let's pause there for a second, guy, because, yeah. All right, because here it goes. If I'm loving God the way God loves me and I'm supposed to mimic the way God loves, then whatever my situation is, it makes it easier for me to understand how to love. It, un it makes it easier for me to love the way God loves. I couldn't understand that because I had a hard heart. I don't know about you. I let my my emotions and my and, and, and everything about me you know, rejection of bitterness, anger, frustration, abandonment, all of that stuff got it was in my heart. And so I, it grew up with me. And so it made me callous to uh, um, what love really is. I, my love was perverted. My love was was about sex. It didn't have absolutely nothing to do with sacrificing, being patient, being kind. It didn't have absolutely nothing to do with that. Nothing. It, mine was just strictly flesh oriented period. That's all it was. And I grew up thinking that way. I grew up with that mindset. And so God says, when he told me he was going to change my heart, I really didn't understand what he was talking about, but I had got to a place where I was like, okay, man, whatever, you, you know, it, it is what it is. Let's just do it. And he started working on the heart, but what he was doing, I really didn't know what he was doing was he was working on Yvette. He was working on Yvette to be able to, to work. I mean, I literally, she was doing this, this was the, the love checklist, patient, kind. It does not envy. It does not dishonor. It's, it's not self-seeking. It's not easily anger. Uh, it keeps no record of wrong. It does not delight. That checklist, like that checklist right there is what I was, I was seeing because before this used to be that the things that was happening, 
You know what I mean? I just felt like I was being dishonored. I felt like, you know, she wasn't patient with me. She, you know, sometimes her words weren't kind to me. I, I was feeling like that. And it doesn't matter if you feel like you're not that way. It's the way the other person perceives it. So it's the same way with God. You don't, you, you saying it that, you saying that you love God, but it's the way God sees it, how you love it. Or, you know, you saying you love God, but God looking at it like, is this what you call love? This is, this is self-seeking. You, you, you only come into me because you want something. You're not patient. You know, you, you wondering why you keep going through some tribulations and some trials for so long because he's probably trying to work some patience in you. He's probably trying to work something in you. Are you kind? Why are you waiting? Is patience making you irritated? Is patience making you angry? Is patience making you unkind? Because today is that day we're checking our love. We're checking the way that we're saying that we love God. Because let me tell you something. God has always been patient with us. He was patient with us. Man, especially with me. He was patient with me while I was in the street. He was patient with me while I backslid. He was patient with me when I, when I was in suicidal, man, a suicidal mindset. He was patient with me while I was in my drugs. He was patient with me in all of these areas. He was patient with me. He's, he was kind to me. He was keeping me safe. He was allowing me to see another day. I, he knew that I was going to wake up and go do drugs. He knew that I was going to wake up and go do pornography, but he was so kind enough to let me see another day because he had a plan for me. He wanted me to understand how much he loved me in the midst of this hard stuff, in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this anger, in the midst of this rejection, in the midst of this abandonment, in the midst of this, this separation, in the midst of all of this stuff that we go through and that we deal with. He still is patient with us, even when we act up. Even when our mouths get us in trouble, even when our facial expressions get us in trouble, he's still patient with us. He's still kind to us. But my question is, when we're in that situation, are we are we looking like God? Are we patient with someone? Are you patient with your spouse? Are you patient with your children? Are you patient with your boss? Are you kind to them? When 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 something doesn't go your way, are you what's your words sounding like? Are, are you speaking kind words? I don't know about you, but I don't, hey, listen. When I was in that, when I was in that place, man, I wasn't saying nothing kind. I wasn't patient. I was irritated, agitated, angered. I mean, I'm you know it says, it says don't let sun don't let the sun go down on your wrath or, or, or be angry and sin not. Man, I was doing all of that. I was anger and sinning. I was I, I was letting it go. I was letting it go two, three, four, five, six days, sometimes weeks of being angry and, and just letting it sit there manifest. And so every time I see my wife, as she was talking to me. I was like, stop talking. Rrr, leave me alone. I'm getting ready to go. I can't I can't deal with this stuff no more. I'm tired of this. And every time she says something, I'm thinking she's just finding fault. She finding fault. She finding fault. And, and that thing used to bug me so bad way. So all I wanted to do was get away. And so God started talking to me. And when he started talking to me about changing my heart and changing my perspective in the way that I feel like, like how I love, he was changing the way I, I love. He, man, because my love, the way I was loving was wrong. All it was is a flesh. It was a flesh place. It was a self-seeking place. And God says, I'm, that's not the way I love. That's not the way I, that's not, that's not me. And so I had to understand the, the, the love that God is, because God is love. And so if God is love, it, then, then what are we doing? What, what are we doing? Gerald, what are you doing? Because he gave me a list of what love is. He says, my love, this is my love, Gerald. I've been patient with you. I've been kind to you. I didn't envy. I wasn't no, it wasn't envious. It wasn't dishonor. It wasn't any of that stuff. It wasn't self-seeking. But when I had to turn around and I had to look at the way I love God, was I patient with God? No, because I'm like, man, God, you better hurry up and do something and you need to do it right now. Was I kind when I was saying it? No, my heart wasn't right when I was saying it. I was saying it in a in a in a, in a harsh way, like like I'm 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 gonna make God do something. Like seriously? Then you realize that you keep going through the same situation over and over and over for a long period of time because God is trying to work some patience in you. Mm, I get it. Do you dishonor others? Do you dishonor your husband? Do you dishonor your wife? Do you dishonor your boss? Do you talk about your boss? Do you you gossip about your boss? You tell, you know, tell all the hard, the horrible things that your spouse has done to you or said to you. You go and tell someone else that. And so they can co-sign it with you. And they be like, girl, you shouldn't have to do that. Once again, 
Now you're talking about patience. God is being patient with you, but you can't be patient with your spouse. God is being uh, uh, um, kind to you, but you can't be kind to your spouse. Listen, listen, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. I, I know in, in, in John 4 and 15, it says, if ye love me, keep my commandment. Jesus said that. In 21, it says, he that he that has com has my commandments and keep them and keep them. He he is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall love my, be loved by my father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself in him. Are we keeping the commandments? Are we even keeping the, the, the things of, of what love is? Because let me tell you something. If you're not doing this part, then you got to be doing this one. You know, if, if, if here's the here's the manifestation of this. It says joy in truth. Uh -huh. Always protect. This is love now. Rejoicing in truth. Always protect. Always trusting. Always in hope. Always preserving. Love never fails. We're talking about the love of God. We're talking about these this stuff right this this is this is love. This is God's love. This is the manifestations of what God's love. It it, it brings forth that truth. It protects you. You you it's, it's, you're able to trust it. Don't you, tell me you don't trust God loving you. If you if you sitting there right now and you feel like, man, I don't trust God loving me. Well, then why you breathing? Why you why you woke up this morning? Because if you can't you can't trust God to love you enough to let you see another day that he has made. No, this 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 is not a day that we made. This is a day that he has made. And he has a, he, he gave us an opportunity to actually uh, um, come into this day. That's why he says rejoice. Rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in the day. Rejoice in my love. Rejoice in this. This is this is about our relationship with God. And if our relationship with God is 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 reconciled and it's back in the right place, everything outside of this will fall into place. I'm not telling you something that somebody had to tell me. I'm telling you something that that we literally had to live and we live in it every single day. And I do, I do this because I want you to I want you to understand that there is hope. There is hope. This 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 man, it, it says always hope. You always hope that this is this man. This, this what God has said is real to me. God has been patient to me. God has been kind to me. He's been he's and all of that stuff to me. So why wouldn't I rejoice in his name? Why wouldn't I rejoice in his name? Why wouldn't I rejoice in the love of God? Because the love of God is true. If God is true, his love is true, then what is it that what, what, that, what are we doing? Listen, I'm getting hot because I, I, I'm telling you, I understand why God is talking about this love. And I need you to understand the love that God is giving, what God is doing in this love. This is not this is not a um, just a fly by night thing. I, 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 I kind of wondered why God was like God. Now, when I, when I, I tell, you know, I tell uh, um, people, I tell my, my wife and my children, you know, when someone I, I, I really truly care about, it's like, dude, I, I, I mean, but I love, I, I love you enough that I'm patient with you. I'm kind to you. I, I care about your well being. I care about, you know what I'm saying? I care about you. And God has put that passion in me to care about people and to love people the way he loves people. Period. Period. I'm not, I, I don't put a condition on why I'm loving you, a condition on how I'm supposed, all of God says, I'm supposed to love you. I'm supposed to be patient with you. And you know, pay, and I'm telling you, I'm not saying that I was, I was good at patience. I mean, I was an impatient person and I'm, he's still working on me when I'm in the traffic. I can't sit in a, I can't sit at a red light all day long. I'm, I'm ready to go. I got to get from point A to point B. I'm, he's working on me with it. And I now I sit there and I'm like, God, you like, uh, this is funny, man. When a light you know the light getting ready to turn green and all of a sudden one car goes through and then all of a sudden it's back at red and you and you getting ready to go through but you can't go through because it's on red and i'm like god for real and then now my mind now in my mind now i'm sitting here thinking about the patience oh gerald he god's working on your patience god is working on your patience 
Because if you can't be patient and you can't be kind, you 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 will fall into this this envy stuff, envying what someone else has, envying what 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 um someone has done, and and and, and then before you know it, now you dishonoring them because now you talking about them. You talk, we talking about you know. Uh, uh, my wife used to say, "Man, God, you love you love Gerald more than you love me." Ah, uh, well, I don't know. I, I can't. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I didn't feel like God loved me because I felt like I was out here doing all of this stuff and, 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 and he wasn't changing you. See, the issue is we always looking for a self-seeking thing. We want God to do something for us, but we're not willing to do something for God. We're not being consistent in God. If God's saying, I need you to love and I need you to be patient, I need you to be the kind, I, I, I need you to, you know, not be angry. I need you to not uh, um, um, point your finger or I need you to not be um, um, fault, you know, be, be just finding fault or whatever it may be that you have done that 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 causes a riff, causes strife, causes an argument, causes an issue. That's that very thing. But here's what happens is here's 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 the one thing that I hear the most. I'm not a doormat. What the heck does that mean? I'm not a doormat. Who told you that? Who who says that? That's something worldly. That's not even in the Bible. It's not even in the Bible. So why would you pick and choose what you want in the Bible and then use something from the world? And, and try to justify what you want to do. I'm talking about what you want to do. That's not what God asks you to do. God don't consider you a no doormat. He com he, his, he considers you submitted and humble. He, con he, con he considers you a, a, a servant. He considers you that. Because let me tell you something. The lower you get, the higher you go. You don't catch, you didn't catch that. You didn't catch that. You're talking about a doormat. But you let me tell you something. When God start elevating you, when God start promoting you, when God start sh moving you up, then there's nothing that anybody can say or do. But what they do see is, man, listen here. I, I need the strength that she has. I need the wisdom she has or he has. I need to know what they what they did because I need to do that. Let me tell you something. We're talking about, we say we're in the image and likeness of God. Okay, then. Today is the day we're talking about the love check. We checking our love. We checking our love because day by day, our love got to get better. It has to get better. I'm going to love differently. I'm a, my love is going to get better every day. Day by day, get better at love. Loving one another. Come on, man. We we, we know the scriptures. We, we, we've read the scriptures. We understand what love is. So now is the day that we walk in a different place. We see ourselves differently. Look in the mirror. And I mean, I don't, I don't care if you literally take these, the love scripture and, 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 and first Corinthians and put this thing on your mirror and just check off today. Have I, was I patient today? Was I kind? Today, did I envy anybody? Today, was I self-seeking in my prayer, self-seeking in my motive? Was I was I easily angered? Did I get angry fast? Because, you know, I'm sitting in this traffic, man. It's like, I have to check myself. I ain't going to lie. Listen, I ain't, I'm not sitting here saying to you that that place of getting angry. But I'm, I'm not angry at my wife like I used to be. I used to be very angry at my wife. I used to be very impatient with my wife. I used to be very unkind to her. And now I, I find, I, cause God changed my heart. Cause God did some things to me. God showed me some things. God, God, God delivered me from some things. And now I'm able to actually do it the proper way. You don't think because your spouse is like, you would say so far gone. Let me tell you something. As you sitting there saying they're so far gone, God is like, oh, my God, when I turn this thing around, you want to know the glory? Because this is what I'm talking about. I was so far gone. People was like, this dude gone, man. Let him go. You, ain't no need of you loving him no more. Man, you, he's out there. God, let, let God, if God going to do it, let God do it, child. Go on about your business. Find you a new man. Find you this. Find you that. You don't need it. You got a good job. You got a good career. You don't need him. The devil is a liar. Because when she asked the question to God, what is it that you want? God says, now, if you want my perfect will, it's to be with Gerald. But 
if you want to go, because I gave a, I, 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 I did the qualifications for her to leave. I, I gave it the biblical qualifications for her to leave, but she chose. This, this is what I'm talking about. This is the difference between, this is the difference between loving like a human or loving like God. Loving like a human to tell you, I got a condition and I can go on out. Now, now that I met that condition, I'm out. It's deuces, peace. But when you say, I want God to look, I want God, I want to do it the way God wants me to do it. I want God's perfect will. That means your love has to come up to these places. Your love it does takes off the condition. Your love goes past the hurt, goes past the pain, goes past the, 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 the aggravation, go past the um, circumstances, go past your, your trauma, go past all of that. It surpasses all of that. Surpasses all of that. And you will say, who the heck does that? I mean, with a roll, with a roll in your head. You know how you, you know how roll your head. Yeah. All right, man, listen. Roll your head, roll your eyes, point your fingers, snap your fingers, whatever it may be. Let me just tell you, if it ain't the way God does it, then you actually doing it the other way. And so here's the question to you again is, you said you love me. You, this is God. Now, you said you love me. He's asking you. You said, he's telling you, you said you love me. If you love me, then you'll do it my way. And then you'll argue with God. But God, I know you don't want, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How you going to tell God way you don't know what he wants you to do? He knows what he wants you to do. He has the plan for you at the beginning. He knew what he knew what you was going to go through before you knew what you was going to go through. He knew what your answer was going to be before you knew what your answer was going to be. But we sit there and argue with God and like, God, we're trying to tell God what God should know. Really? Yeah, all God is trying. Listen, if we're not going to do it, how we expect the world to show love? If we're not going to do it, how we're going to expect our community to show love. How are we going to do it? If he can't get his sons and daughters to do it, how in the world do we expect anybody else to do it? How? Why? Because we're the light. We're the salt. We're his image and likeness. We're his chosen ones. We're his sons and daughters. And he's called for us to actually do something. But how in the world will we be able to show love to someone else when we don't even show the same love to God? How many times you go and you, you 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 have a conversation with God and it's self-seeking? Because you go on to God and saying, God, I need you to fix him. I need you to fix her. I need you to deliver him. I need you to deliver her. Your whole message, your whole prayer is about changing somebody else. And not one time did you say, God, change me. God, deliver me. Deliver me from anger. Deliver me from impatience. Deliver me from 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 uh, um, being upset. Deliver me from the trauma. Deliver me from. I mean, spend that time doing that. Spend the time doing that. Don't open your mouth and be self seeking and be praying. Yes, you you can pray for somebody else. You can pray for them. But can you spend a, more time praying for yourself? And praying that you get delivered, that when you pray, you praying out of a different place. You're praying out of a different heart. You're praying out of a different posture. You're not praying because you wanted to self-seeking. You're not praying because you just want something to happen so fast and you and, and you want something to be done for somebody. Come on. Man, today is the day we checking our love. I'm sorry. It might seem like I'm I'm kind of going off of. Because God was just, I, it was just one of those things. And I'm like, God, I, I get how you stripped me. I get how you changed the way I look. I know where I was. I knew I was the unlovable person. I knew I was the person that, that caused my wife to be angry all the time. I caused that stuff. And so I know if he can change me, I know if he can work on me, I know if he can change my heart to have my heart to feel the way I used to tell my wife, you got the heartbeat of God. Man, you just, you, your heart beats with God's beat. I mean, you, who does what you do? I used to say, you just extra. But she wasn't extra. She was only doing it the way God, and, and, and when, see, this is what you think extra is. When, when you want to compromise, <laughs> when you want to do it your way, and you don't want to do it God way, you'll say somebody extra. I used to tell her she was extra all the time. 
but now I understand what she, who she is. I understand who she loves. I understand who she submitted to. I understand what she yield to. I understand it now. I can see it now. And now because I'm walking in it, now because I put my place, I put myself in it, I got a better understanding of what she was dealing with or what she was doing, how God was pruning her, how God was correcting her, how God was changing her, how God was dealing with her. I understand that. Do you understand? Do you understand what God love it really is and what it really does and how it really works? Do we understand? Because if we don't understand, we got to go back to this. We got to go back to, to the love, what love is. I mean, if you just stay on patience and kind, it does not envy. It does not dishonor. Because if you're a dishonorable person, if you walk around here and you talk about your boss, you talk about your husband, your spouse, your 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 mother, your, your father, anybody that's that's out of order, that's dishonor. So we got to check it. And on top of it, if you actually did any of this stuff, can you please repent? I Listen, let me tell you something. I spend my time repenting. I'm listening. When God showed me something that I, what I didn't do right, I have to repent. I renounce my words. If I've talked about somebody, I'll renounce it. If I, if I know their number and I can call them, I can say something to them. I, I try my best to do it. But I'm telling you, I'm, hey, listen, go back and correct these things. Because those things are are, are are like weight to you. They they hold on to you. The devil is a legalist. He only he's only gonna use what you allow him to use. And so let's let's not be let's let's not operate in 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 um our the human um nature, the carnal way of loving. The carnal way of loving is I put a condition on on the way I'm going to love you. Because if you don't love me, I'm not going to love you. If you don't treat me right, I'm not going to treat you right. If you don't talk to me, I ain't going to talk to you. If you don't da 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 you know how we do this stuff, man. It's, it's, it's kid stuff. You know, we, and as we grow up, as we grow up and then we and we mature in Christ, we become more like Christ. We be we we're able to love the way He said it right here. He says, "I manifest myself in them." If you love, if you're loving them and keeping His commandments, and 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 you're doing what God has asked you to do, then Jesus said that I'll manifest my love in you. You can't do this love in your natural way. It's the, it's the God that's inside of you. It, it's, it's, it's Christ that lives inside of you that helps you to be able to love the unlovable, to be able to love through hurt, to be able to love like you ain't never been hurt before. Can you love like that? Love like you've never been hurt. <whistles> love like you've never been hurt. Can Can we get, can you do that? Can you do that? Because that's how God loves you. He loves you like he's never been hurt. Like you've never hurt him. Like you've never sinned. Like you've never done anything that was that was bad, that was whatever. You know, nothing. He, he still loves you. I mean, he loves you so much that he just continues to let you see another day. The day that he wants you to rejoice in. The day that he wants you to be glad in. The day that he wants you to 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 uh, uh, to love the unlovable. To love with unconditions. To love, man, to love the way he loves. This is, this is, man, this is, listen, if we get to this place and we get the body of Christ to get to this place, I'm talking about the sons of the, I can't expect somebody in the world to get this. I can't expect for somebody in the world to understand this. But what they can understand is when you walk amongst them and they see you, they recognize the God in you. They recognize you different. They recognize that when they gossiping, you don't gossip. When, when you, you, you say, can we pray about it instead of talk about it? Ooh. When you say, stop being in a hurry. Let's just have some patience. Let's let's talk some, let's do something different. Let's say something different. Let's respond the way something different. Let's go. I don't envy you. I, I, I'm not jealous of you. Listen, I thank God for you. I thank God for your gift. I thank God for your anointing. I thank God for your prayers. I thank God for you. It's that place, y'all. It's that place. So love like you've never been hurt. Can you do that? Can, can, can we really, let me tell you something. Can we really do that? Can we love 
like we haven't like we haven't been hurt. Like you've never been hurt. I'm talking about never, not have, never. Like you've never been hurt. Because if if you say that, that means you can't never bring it up. Does God bring back up everything that you've done? If he said he loved you, he loved you. He doesn't bring up, he, he, he doesn't rehearse the, the wrong things you've done. He doesn't rehearse that. He, he doesn't keep a record of your wrong. He doesn't keep a record of your wrong. What if God kept a record of your wrong? If you're walking around and you're keeping a wrong of your spouse, then you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. So what if God just start bringing up all the wrong you've done? The way you respond, the way you open your mouth, the way you prayed, the way you talked about them, the way you cursed, the way you did this, the way you rolled your head, your facial expressions, all of that stuff that ain't pleasing to God. And he keep bringing it up to you. How would you feel? You'll feel like you're ready to run away. You'll feel like I'm leaving you, God. I'm tired of hearing this. So when, when you get to that place, you got to you got to expect the other person, the, other, the spouse to feel the same way. So do you want do you want to do you want to reap what you sow? So what are you sowing? If you're not sowing love, how are you expecting to reap it? Because you do it. There's a reaping and there's a sowing. So what are you reap? What are you sowing? Are you sowing this? Are you sowing love? Let me tell you something. Are you sowing the love of God? Are you? Because if you're sowing the love of God, then then you 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 will reap the love. I'm telling you. So start loving. Start loving like Christ loved. Start loving unconditionally. Start loving with without conditions. Love like you've never. And when I say never, I mean I want you to put never in capital words. I will love like I've never been hurt. It doesn't even matter what my, a person has done to me. I'm going to love him regardless. Why? Because I understand that God loved me so much that he gave his son. I understand that God loves me so much that he gave me an opportunity to see another day. I understand that. Do y'all do y'all get that one? Listen, somebody just said, man, that is hard. Listen, you can't do it in your own because he just, Jesus said it in John um, 14 and 21. Just read 14 and 21. He said, manifest myself in them. Why are you sitting here trying to do it on your do it on your own? You got to do that in him. Christ lives in me. As I live in Christ, Christ lives in me. That's what I'm talking about. I will love like I've never been hurt. And I tell you, when you say it, I want you to say never. I want you to feel like, I mean, I want you to feel it when you say it. I don't want you to just say it. I want you to feel it when you say it. I want it to come out of the depth of your soul. I want it to come out of your mouth like you you like you like telling the devil, you no longer going to hold me in a traumatic place. You're no longer going to hold me in an unforgiving place. You're no longer going to hold me in a rejected place, abandoned place, a lonely place. You're not going to hold me that. You're not going to hold me because that place is getting you to it, it, it's, it's that place that's keeping you in a hurt place. And it's, it's, it's giving it's, it's giving you an excuse not to love properly. It's giving you an excuse not to love the way God says love. It's trying to separate you from the love of God. But today. Today is reconciled. You'll reconcile back to the love of God. You'll reconcile back to the way God says he wants me to love. My trauma has been healed. You're talking about Jehovah Raphael, the God that healed. I'm talking about God, put your finger, you know, on that on, on that traumatic area in their lives that heals them now. This is that day. Listen, man, it starts with us. It starts with us, brothers, sisters. It starts with us in Christ. It starts with us. If we can't do it, how in the world do we expect our community to do it? How we expect our 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 um um um, the world to do it. How do we expect that? We sit there and look at the news and we look at all of this stuff and we're like, oh my God, these people are going crazy. Da, da, da. Dude, it starts with us. We're the salt. We're the tent peg. We're his chosen ones. He called us to pray. He calls us to be image and likeness of him. He called us. He called us. He called you. He called me. He called all of us to do this. We have to do this. You can do this. The Christ that is in you gives you the ability to do this. 
Stop talking about it's too hard. Stop talking about the circumstances. Stop talking about the, the, the things that have been happening around you. Stop complaining about it. Stop praying self-seeking prayers. Come to God with a God that I, I, I love you so much, God. I understand what you're working in me. I understand delivering me. I understand not, not only deliver me, but deliver my eyes, deliver my ears, deliver my words, deliver my mouth, deliver my heart, deliver my soul. I'm talking about deliver my five senses. No, I don't even want to think the same. I don't even want to smell the same. I want to I, I want to smell the aroma that you smell. I want to speak the words that you want me to speak. I want to hear the words. I want to hear your voice constantly. I want to see the way you see. I want to think the way you think. I I want to feel in my heart the way you feel in your heart. I want my steps to be ordered by you. Walk this thing out with me, God. Show me how to walk this love out. Show me how to how to change my mind. Show me how to change my words. Show me. I'm talking about me, not praying for praying to change someone else. Show me, God. Show me where I went wrong. Show me where I where my words was 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 hurtful. Show me what I was seeing wrong. Show me what I was hearing wrong. Show me my 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 jacked up perspective. Show me. Because it all boils down to, are you willing to make a change? Will you change? Will you love the way God wants you to love? Because you've already said, I will. I will love like I've never been hurt. I'm talking about let that thing go. I'm talking about old relationships. I'm talking about old habits, old mindsets, old hurt. Somebody hurt you 20 years ago. You still holding on to it. You don't even love them no more. You can't even have, you don't even have, you, look, you, feel, you say, I don't even have the capacity to love them. What? You still holding on to that? Dude, that's been like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You still mad at what somebody said to you? You still holding a grudge? I mean, somebody said something to you yesterday and now you mad all over again. Come on now. Let's break that off right now. Let's let's cancel that now. Let's cancel that. I, I, that 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 thing that has happened to you in your past, that thing that has hurt, that's stopping you from loving, that's stopping you from being patient, that's stopping you from being kind. Listen, here, here's how when you know you when you know you deliver, when you can come, when you can think of the most hurtful thing that has ever happened to you. And you and, and in your heart and in your mind, I'm talking about like like legitimately say, man, I don't even bother me no more. Man, I'm so past that. Man, I, I love them person. Man, I got molested as a kid twice, male and female. Yeah, I'm like, dude, it, it happened. It is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm over. But let me tell you something. I was mad. I was mad at everybody. I was mad at everybody that was supposed to protect me. I was mad at everybody. But you know what though? That 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 same place was growing up with me that had was tormenting me. I didn't even know it was tormenting me. The the per, the, 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 the it jacked up the way I love. So I didn't even understand what love was. My love was perverted. My love, it, I'm talking about it grew up with me and I got married with this thing and this thing was bad. And so I was an angry person, but the anger was so, if you would have ever saw me or uh, known me, you wouldn't have never known I was an angry person. You wouldn't have never known that because I, I suppressed it. I kept it in. And when I when it came out, I only, it, it only came out when I was like uh, uh, frustrated or, or when I was mad at my wife or any things like that, it came out. But you know what though? Now it's like, man, listen. When God changed my heart, all of that stuff left. It, it, I got delivered from that. You, that that wasn't gonna be my my uh, uh my anchor. You wasn't gonna you wasn't gonna sink me with with um being molested. You're not gonna sink me with these drugs no more. You're not gonna sink me with this alcohol. You're not gonna sink me with pornography. You're not gonna sink me. With, you're not gonna. Do, I'm just not gonna allow that to happen because I'm gonna love unconditionally. I'm gonna love like I've never been hurt. It doesn't even matter. I don't care what the what what the what people running around here saying, what names you call me. That don't even mean absolutely nothing to me. I'm being real. A name don't mean absolutely. You can listen, bro. I know what my name means. I know what my name is. I don't you can call me whatever you want to. That's on you. That don't bother me. That don't phase me. That don't move me. It doesn't move me at all. I don't get riled up. Because you said something to me. You called me. I don't get riled up about that. Because now I understand I got to love like I've never been hurt. I got to love unconditionally. I, I, that, that thing had dealt with me when I was a little kid. Like a little kid. 
I was always loving, always loving. I was a lovable, I was a lovable, I was a lovable looking kid because I was the smallest kid and I was just loving. I was always loving. You ask any of my players, man, I'm grown men. I'm talking about grown men. I, I, play, I coach a, a game of grown men, a semi-pro team. And let me tell you something. I would tell these grown men, come here, man. Give me a hug. I love you. I love you. And, 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 I'm, and, I, and I'm talking about genuine love. I'm not talking about I got a condition. I'm going to love him because he, he, he's doing the right thing. I was loving them when they wasn't doing the right thing. I was loving them when they was going to jail and coming out of jail. I was loving them when their mind was wrong. I was loving them, period. Period. God showed me I can do this. I can, you can love without putting a condition on somebody. I was loving them regardless of a skin color, period. So why, why does our love have to look like the world's love and not look like the love that God is showing? Can anybody answer that? Why does our love have to look like the world love when it does not look like God's love, God is talking about his love is, is authentic. His love is never fails. His love is not self-seeking. His love is patient. His love is kind. His love does not dishonor. His love, man, it does not delight in evil. Come on, y'all. So today, I just need you to just go to sec, go to 1 Corinthians and, and, and read the love and, and just just see where you went wrong. See if it's something that that you could do better. See if it's something that you missing because God is trying to bring it all back. God is trying to heal it all. God is trying to restore it all. And he's trying to restore you back to him. And if you can't get back to him, then it's going to be extremely hard to think that things are going to get back to you. You can't expect them to come back to you if you can't even get back to God and where God wants you to be. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because if it makes sense, today is the day that your eyes have been opened to the love of God, that, I, that I'm going to love like I've never been hurt. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That place, that place right there, is freedom. It's freedom. No more bondage, no more hurt, no more disappointment. There's absolutely nothing a human can do to you, can do to you. They can do, they can say whatever they want to say. They can act the way they want to act. But let me tell you something, the love of God, boy, let me tell you what the love of God does. Ooh. It never fails. It's the truth. It's hope. Let me tell you, the love of God. I ain't talking about no superficial love. I ain't talking about that junk that you learn, you know, by your your, your friends or, or whatever. That I'm talking about authentic love. I'm talking about God's love. The love that, that, that he says, I gave my only begotten son for you. Are you willing to sacrifice your human, natural, carnal mindset to do it God's way? Because only thing that's stopping you from doing it that way is your hurt. Get yourself healed. Get yourself delivered. And start living the way God wants you to live and love the way God wants you to love. Get away from that hurt. Listen, I don't care if you just write it on a piece of paper. Whoever done hurt you, whatever someone has said to you, write it down on the piece of paper. Because it says, write, you know, write it down, make it plain. Okay, let's write it down and, 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 and say, I forgive such and such. I love such and such. Show me the show me how to love this person again, God. Show me how to how to love them unconditionally. Show me how to 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 work the love that you have into this, into me, that I'ma show it into someone else. Good? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna work this thing today. We're gonna work this thing. I'm a I, hey, listen, I'ma love like I've never been hurt. You're going to love like you've never been hurt and never is in capital letters. Just so you know, each letter is in capital because I need you to get it. I need you to get this in your spirit. I need you to get this in your mind, not only in your mind, but I need you to get this in your heart. I'm getting hot. 
So I got, I, I'm, you know, this just drive away. And so I'm sitting in my car and I'm getting hot because God is heating me up. And when I say he's heating me up, I understand where this passion and this love is coming from. It's coming from the depth of my soul. I, I don't want, I don't want anybody to be hurt. I don't want anybody to feel like they don't have the ability to love. I'm going to need you to love that person, whoever it may be. I don't know who that person is, but I need you to love them. I need you to literally say, I love you. If you have the, the opportunity to, to ask for forgiveness and say, I, I love you. And, and I'm a, and I love you the way God loves you. I love you, but I, I love you because I am a child of God. And, and that's the way I'm alone. I'm not, there's no more. Listen, there's, there's no more, um, 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 limits. Uh, I'm going to love you, but I'm, you, you done made me mad or you done did this, man. We're not doing that, okay? We're not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to hold a grudge. We're not going to hold no wrongs. We're not going to hold them uh, hold them against their wrongs. We're not going to hold them against any of that stuff. We're going to let them go. Today is the day that they are free, that we're letting them be free, and we're not going to be hurt. We're not going to be traumatized. We're not going to uh, um, bring back up all old wounds, all old hurt, all old conversations, all old anything. We're not going to do that. Today is the day that that God has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day that I open my eyes and I see that I need to be able to love the way God loves. I get it. Today you get it. Today we get it together. Today, today the day we start coming in agreement that we're going to show some unconditional love and that as we show unconditional love, wherever you are, we come in in agreement. Oh, you're not in my neighborhood. You're not right around the corner from me. I'm talking about wherever you are, we are going to come together and we're going to shed so much love that people around us are going to look at us like we crazy. My God, what, what, what's, what, what are they doing? What are they doing? And then we'll start seeing God heal the land. It starts with us. We talking about God heal the land. God heal the land. God heal the land, man. You got, you got the, the 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 worldly people, the the news people condemning the land, all of this stuff. But God tells us to speak to the land. God, tell, how we gonna speak? How we gonna speak love in, in the land when we're not even exuding love? When we have some animosity inside of us? When we have some hatred in, in inside of us? When we have trauma inside of us, and that we don't even love our brothers and sisters? How, how many times? How many of y'all speak to y'all? brothers and sisters how many of them ever done something to you how many you, you mad at your mama or your daddy you mad you you mad at your you mad at god you mad at your spouse you mad at your children you somebody done done something to you so now you, you you're not even talking to them anymore you don't even you don't even call them you don't even love them listen i've been there i've been there and i thank god for delivering me out of that place and, and, and showing me the ability to love again man i love this love Cause I get that get that love back. Cause when I show my love, I, I I I'm so in love, and I get love back. I get love back. I'm talking about my kids, my wife, my family. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Y'all can do this. I know you can. I believe in you. I believe in you. I really, really believe in you. Because if you make that declaration, I will love like I never. I mean, scream it, y'all. I mean, I'm talking about, can I get some passion with that never? I don't care if you go N, E, V, E, R. I don't even care. I don't care. That's when I know that you're being passionate about this thing, that you're letting that hurt go. You're letting it go. I bind the hurt, the trauma, the thing that you won't let go. Father, give them the ability to let it go. I sever that tie right now that have caused them to be locked down, blocked down, limited in the love capacity to, to love the way you want them to love, the inability to love, the inner, the, 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 impatient person, the unkind person. I declare that they will no longer be that person now in the name of Jesus. They will manifest the love of God each and every day as they speak, as they walk. People will look at them and they will see the love of God. When the people see them, they will see you, Father. That they will see more of you and less of them, Father God. I decree and declare that they are living examples, living sacrifices, Father, of who you are in them. 
in them, Father. Live in them, Father. Exude out of them, Father God, like never before. Like never before. Show them the strength that they need, Father God. Give them the strength that they need. Give them the wisdom that they need. Give them the understanding that they need. Mm. Come on, y'all. Today is the day we break through. Today is the day you break out of the hurt. Today is the day you break out of that carnal mindset of, I can't do this. You don't understand how hard it is. That's an excuse. Stop giving yourself an excuse. You give your way, you give yourself a way out. Yes, that's telling me you don't want to work at it. That's telling me you don't you well, you don't know I have been working at it. Well, then you gotta work some patience. You know what patience brings. Patience brings tribulation. Tribulation is a test to see if you're going to actually have the patience. If you can actually get through what you have to go through. Sometimes it's on you because you're going so long and because it's happening for so long. It's on you. It's on you. But you want to blame it on the other person. Stop putting it on the other person and turn around and look at yourself in the mirror. Am I being patient? Am I being kind? Am I being a fault finder? Am I being, am I holding a grudge? Am I holding this person to wrong for something that they had done to me? Am I loving them unconditionally? Because if you start looking at that place and evaluate yourself at that place, you can, you can stop giving yourself an excuse because if it ain't loving like God, then you giving yourself an excuse. Today is the day we cut those excuses. Today is the day we don't use an excuse to God. If God says do it, then that's what we got to do. If God says love, then we got to love. If God says be kind, we got to be kind. If God says be patient, we got to be patient. If God says don't hold no record of wrong, then don't hold no record of wrong. Don't don't gossip about it. Don't bring it back up. If you got if you feeling like you bring back up every single thing, and somebody just said, well, if you don't bring it back up, how would they know? Let God do that. It ain't for you to do it. That's why the issue is the way it is, because you always trying to bring it up. You trying to be God. Let God be God and you just be you. You be reconciled back to God and let God reconcile them back to him. That's how that works. That's how that works. So if you ain't willing to do that, then you probably just turned off this. You probably just said, man, this dude here done lost his dog on mine. I ain't knowing that, man. That, man, I'm, I'm going to stay in this place. Okay, stay in that place. You'll be sitting here talking about, you'll be gossiping and you'll be sitting there in a tormented place for, for a very long time until God said, till you said, God, okay, I'm done. Because let me tell you something. God ain't going to leave you. God is going to be right there. He's patient with you. He, he knows your stubbornness. He knows the stubbornness that you're dealing with. And he knows the pride that you're dealing with. So he's going to sit there and he's going to tell you, daughter, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. Son, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. I'm right here. Whenever you feel like you want to come to me, whenever you feel like you need me, whenever you feel like you want to come out of your own feelings and your own emotions, I'm right here and I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to give you your strength. I'm going to give you some wisdom. I'm going to give you some understanding. I'm going to give you what you need. Are you willing to ask God for that? For you, not for somebody else, but for you. Can we spend more time praying for God to, 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 to develop us, to, to, to work in us, to, to mold us and create in us a clean heart and a right spirit, all of that, to be able to do what we need to do? Whew. Come on now. Listen, today is the day that we love in a whole nother place. So let God love be shown all throughout, all throughout today, all throughout this week, all throughout tomorrow. I mean, just like, let's just do today. Let's just see how much love we can put out today. Let's just tell somebody that, that has hurt us, that has said something to us, that, that done something that hurt us. You go to them and just, and, and say, I forgive, please forgive me. I love you. I'm, I'm talking about I love you from the depths of my heart. And especially if it's the hardest thing for you to do, God will set you free. They, there's your key to get free. There's your key to free. To freedom is to love again. You stop loving. You put a condition on love. God said, I'm trying to set you free. He's trying to set you free. 
but you're holding on to this anger, this animosity, this, this frustration, this irritation, agitation, all of these things that you're just holding on to because you feel like you got a right to hold on to it. Man, you don't have a right to hold on to that. The devil telling you you got a right to, and the devil just sitting there laughing at you. He got you He got you so jacked up and got you so emotionally up and down. You crying for absolutely nothing. You crying. Every time you think about the, the things that have been done, you just start crying. And God has said, I'm just trying to wipe away your tears. I'm trying to set you free. All you got to do is just do the opposite of what he's talking about. I need you to love and not hate. I need you to love and not be angry. I need you to love and not be resentful. I need you to love and not be dishonorable. I need you to love. Why is it that it's so hard? And I understand the enemy just, he, he, he hates us to a place where he doesn't want us to experience or walk in God's love. Because if it does, it spreads like wildfire, and then all of a sudden he he loses control of a nation. We trying to make him lose grip of our nation. I'm not talking about just your family. That's self-seeking. We talking about a nation. Let's be the salt. Let's be the tempest of our nation. Let's be that. Let's love like that. Yes, you know, I say, oh, you don't know what's going on. I know. I'm a black man living in this, living in America. I do understand. Believe that. Believe that. But that ain't going to stop me from loving the way God says love. That's not going to stop me. I'm sorry. I, 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 signed up, I signed up for Christ. I signed up to live like God said. I signed up for that. I, I mean, I understand what people are doing. I understand what things are happening. I understand what I did in my marriage. I understand the hurtful things that I've done. But let me tell you something. If God can restore me and God can, I'm talking about, so people are like, well, you don't know what they're doing. Listen, bro, I knew what I was doing to my family. This is my first ministry. This is the first thing. What's happening in your home? You're talking about what's happening in the street. What's happening in your home? Is dysfunction in your in your home? Is dysfunction around you? Come on, y'all. Let's just love. Let's love. Let's love the way God says love. So today has been another nugget from the driveway motivation. I'm Gerald, one half of Gerald and Yvette Ministries. I pray that these nuggets help you, motivate you, stretch you, pull you, renew you. I, listen, God got, has us on love, y'all. And this love is serious. So go to our website, GeraldineVette.com. I've done a couple of love um, broadcasts. Go back through them. Check them out. Go back. Go to our YouTube channel, Geraldine Yvette Ministries, and listen to them. And, and, and let it get into your spirit because God is really talking about the way that we're supposed to love, y'all. This is I'm telling you, man, this 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 is not just an average or uh, uh, just a fly by night thing. I, don't, I mean, God is talking about this love and this love is serious. It, it really is. And if we're if if the if the nation is supposed to change, it's going to start with us. It's going to start. It's going to start with the way we love, the way that we do things. It's going to start with us. It's not going to start with the world and then come to us. You know, it's, it's that's not the way it's supposed to happen. We're the we're the ones that that's supposed to make be the thermostat of what's going on. But we missing it. Because we get in our emotions, we get in our feelings, we get into that that place that I mean, we're talking about Christians that that have traumatic areas in their life that haven't been dealt with. Can't tell me that don't happen because I did it, I lived it. Can't tell me that. So I, ain't, can, I don't need nobody to tell you, oh that don't happen. That's a lie. I lived that. That was me I, in the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. So you can't tell me it can't happen. You can't tell me that it doesn't happen. So it is. So, but it's us to be delivered. It's us to be clear. It's us to get this thing out of us that we can actually do what God has asked for us to do. So go to our website, journeyinvent.com, get some get some resources. Um, my wife got a book, two book, well, a book and a workbook. Um, help for the help me workbook and book. I'm telling you, it 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 it'll help you. That that's the place, that book is the place where <laughs> You will get some strategies and some understanding of loving somebody like you ain't never been hurt. That's her story. She can help you with that one. That's hers. That's why you get those help me sips and tips. That's coming from that place of loving somebody that 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 that's unlovable. Loving somebody that 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 surpasses your understanding of why you should do what you're doing. That's that book. 
And then we have a book of reconciliation, uh, uh, bringing um, hope and help to your marriage or to your rest, uh, restoration to your marriage with um, bent but not broken. That's a book of our love story of all the stuff that happened. <laughs> A lot of it has happened and some some more stuff that you know it, it is what it is and so go to the website and you can check it out on the website if you're out of the country you might want to just get it on amazon because it's it, it'll be easier for you to get it through amazon and once again go to our um youtube channel Geraldine Yvette ministries um please subscribe please like and please if if it's something that's on there that that blesses you Please leave a comment and let us know if it if it bless you and if it if it didn't bless you, you know I'm, I'm good with that too because I I, I want to know, you know what I mean? I want to know what you think. I want to know if you want to love. I want to know how you love. I want to know if you have the ability to love or what's stopping you from loving. And if it's something that's stopping you from loving, then we it's something that you can be we, we can pray about and, and get this thing you know get this thing worked out. Cause listen, it's this is serious now. This is very serious. Pray about those things that have stopped you from loving. Pray about those things that have stopped you from loving. Not your spouse, not your brain, not your mama, your daddy, or anybody. You. We're talking about you today. All this, this love thing is about you. It ain't about your spouse. It ain't about anybody. Because if you can love God and do what God says, it, it'll work on somebody else. Because what's inside of you will be shown through you and somebody else will get saved. Somebody else will get delivered. So it starts with you. So this whole love series is not about your spouse. It is not about your boss. It is not about your neighbor. It is about you and God. You said you love me. God is excellent. You said you love me, Gerald. You said you love me. Put your name in it. Thank you. I appreciate you. I really do appreciate y'all joining me. And I pray that this blesses you. I know I've probably gone an hour and I'm sorry. But y'all have a blessed day.